Okay, you see how they move in packs, always in, in cover. Beautiful. The setting of the Battle of Stalingrad, excellent. I love the vibe. Oh, anti tank gun! I take back what I said. Well done. The amount of details in this movie, insane. Welcome to History Legends and in this video I'll do a step-by-step -step analysis of the German 1993 movie called Stalingrad. The movie skillfully presents the point of view of lower ranking German soldiers during World War II. But as usual, don't forget to like, hit the bell and subscribe. And if you're interested in the Battle of Stalingrad, I have dozens of stories about this battle in my veterans book from all sides, link in the bio. Mila, let's go. You see this? They're crawling. Taking cover. Beautiful. Are they crazy? They're firing on our own positions. Command structure, yes. Okay, guys, do the same as I do. We have to take this place at all costs. It's suspicious. Pay attention as to how the soldiers move. Do not open targets. Well done. Well done. So you see, they crawl. They move fast. And what I also find interesting is how the soldiers move in packs, most often following their NCOs, for example. So you'll see in one company, a lot of small packs moving forward. The other thing I like right away from this movie is the vibe it sets. So this officer of the 24th Panzer Division wrote about the Battle of Stalingrad. Stalingrad is no longer a town. By day, it is an enormous cloud of burning, blinding smoke. It is a vast furnace lit by the reflection of its flames. And this description is exactly what we have here. And the other thing I like about this scene right away is that we see the Germans attacking as it was in reality. Now the problem the German soldiers are facing here is that the Soviets are so close to their own positions that the German artillery has trouble providing a decent artillery barrage without hitting its own troops. But for the same reason you can bet the Soviets would stick as close as possible to the Germans and this was typically 50 meters, that's nothing. Oh, perfect. Support. Cease fire. Where are the five Sturmgeschütz? We can't see them. As always. Probably they have to attack without support. Only fire at my command. Fire. <laughs> Not fire. Forward, men. Follow me. Okay, you see how they move in packs? Always in, in cover. Beautiful. The setting of the Battle of Stalingrad. Excellent. I love the vibe. We see a flamethrower in the back. 
Look at how they move. It's rather fast. Look at this. He changes his hand. Beautiful. Little detail. Very well done. He doesn't want to expose himself. We see the command structure. Very good. They move from one hole to another. Said uh, it's not my fault. I'm sorry. And now everybody knows where they are. Indirectly, the movie shows once again the problems the Germans faced at Stalingrad. So you see, artillery shells fall from the top and manage to destroy enemy buildings. But they don't destroy enemy strongholds. So what this German rifle company needs is actually tanks to fire straight into the buildings. Or like they asked for, Sturmgeschütz assault guns. So probably for budget reasons, they could not have five tanks or assault guns present on the movie set. But they skillfully twist that around by saying, oh, the tanks did not arrive, but we still have to capture that factory. But in reality, the Germans had two to four tanks assigned to every rifle company. Imagine that. Now, since the Soviets had very few tanks available in Stalingrad, to counter the Germans, the Soviets would usually have two to four anti-tank guns in every stronghold. And this is sadly not portrayed here. The other thing I noticed is that the German rifle company is lightly armed, a bit too lightly, in my opinion. I did see one or two flamethrowers that are very useful in cleaning buildings. But if we look at the 1942 structure of a German rifle company, we can notice a few things. Every German squad should have one light machine gun. And overall, the company should also have, theoretically, three mortars. So you can imagine the firepower of a regular German rifle company at Stalingrad. Four tanks, a lot of men, a lot of firepower. In this case, the light machine guns would have been very useful to provide covering fire for the advancing infantry, especially since they don't have any tanks available. Oh, now they're screwed. Casualties are rising. They're pinned down. Shit. We can't do anything. He's uh, done. The troops are pinned down, they won't move forward. Apparently, uh, these are better than ours. Head up. <laughs> you can uh, saw a few uh, Russians with it. But see, they move fast. This is what I like. But you see, the moment they expose themselves, casualties. But this is a fortress. I don't know how they're going to do that. I find it very interesting how this movie portrays how fast a company could get pinned down and stop moving. But while watching the scene, I was just wondering how many casualties can a unit take before it breaks? Turns out, the US Army did a study about the behavior of US battalions during World War II. So they found out that whenever US infantry was attacking German defensive positions, it took on average 26% casualties for the attacking force to break. Now, I know this is for a battalion and in the movie we're talking about company level. But let's just run the numbers for fun. Right off the bat, the German rifle company already seems under strength. So let's say they have 80 men. Now, 26% casualties translates to 20 men of this company. That means 5 killed and 15 wounded before the attack is called off. And interestingly enough, 
This is exactly what's happening to this rifle company in the movie. So well done once again. They're pinned down, lots of wounded men. Oh, anti-tank gun. I take back what I said. Well done. The amount of details in this movie, insane. Okay, watch out for uh, the old uh, tanks. Okay, forward men, the uh, artillery shells are coming closer. That happened a lot, you know, a lot of men, they break down mentally during the battle. Okay, leave him, let's just come with us. Okay, let's go, let's go. Okay, follow me. Look at this set. You see the tanks, you see a bunch of material. Well done. Would have been interesting to see German tanks as well, honestly. Now the rifle company stuck. You always hear that the Battle of Stalingrad was bloody and very difficult for the German army, but I'll run you through the tactical problems the Germans faced at Stalingrad. First thing, the Germans preferred to fight in daylight, because this is when they could actually have air support. And for this reason, German soldiers did not like to fight at night. They were more vulnerable and it made them very anxious and nervous. The other thing is that the Germans always used a certain pattern before attacking Soviet positions. So first the Stukas would drop their bombs, followed by an artillery barrage, then the tanks would come into play, and lastly the infantry would move forward. However, this slow and sequential procedure would make German assaults very predictable, and the Soviets could easily send reinforcements to the positions that the Germans were targeting. Now, you've seen the Battle of Stalingrad was an urban battle. And in ordinary circumstances, both sides would avoid fighting in open streets or public squares as it was exposed to enemy fire. But when attacking, the Germans were sometimes forced into these open areas when staging large-scale assaults. And these areas allowed for the German tanks to actually deploy. But this is also where the Soviets concentrated their anti-tank guns. And lastly, we can't forget that the Soviets were very aggressive in their defense. Whenever the Germans would take hold of one building, the Soviets would counterattack right away. And most often they would attack from the flanks or even from the rear to drive the exhausted Germans out of this building. This method was certainly costly for the Soviets, but this push and pull became mentally draining for German troops, whose casualties kept rising with no significant gains in territory. Now they're pinned down again. Impossible. Impossible doesn't exist. So this is the lieutenant, there's the captain. We can't go through. Okay, now you have to uh, redeem yourself for your mistake. You'll make your wife proud. I'll go. I won't disappoint you. We'll cover you. Run!
Okay, let's see the if American movies and German movies have the same heroic actions. I mean, oh my God! I mean, this uh, throw is very lucky. This guy was uh, responsible anyway. Okay, we have to take this factory at all costs. Follow me. I find it very interesting that you see the soldiers carrying the telephone lines for the captain and the troops to coordinate fire support and everything. Well done. With that being said, the 1993 German movie of Stalingrad shows you the difficult fighting that both sides had to go through. And instead of going for spectacular propaganda, it only shows you the brutality of war. And I believe you need the Germans to portray this dark and grim reality of war. And what I like is that they have a lot of extras. We see the scale of the battle and the entire scenery makes you actually believe you're in Stalingrad. Did I miss anything? Did you like this battle scene? What did you think of my analysis? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you're interested about the experience of a Soviet soldier during the Battle of Stalingrad, I recommend you my book. One of these stories is so detailed, it will leave you in shock. Link is in the bio.